Hello everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Hope everybody is having a fun and safe and wonderful Juneteenth. I know I am. Um, so, in this video, I am going to just kind of share with you guys all um, a little bit of how I cured the HLVD that I got in some genetics from California. I fixed it all up um, and I didn't just do it alone. I have some friends that actually have PhDs in botany as well as chemistry and biology. We all worked together and uh, found a solution um, as well as, you know, me adding my two cents in and putting some things together as well. It was a nice group effort. We all collaborated and we found a solution, a very concrete and perfect solution. It works. Um, however, I'm only going to share a little bit of a part of that and I'm only gonna drop some hints because um, I have been made aware that uh, some people have been, not, uh, not only other content creators have been pirating my videos and pirating my knowledge, but a lot of people like owners or cultivation managers who don't even have high school diplomas who are, who are somehow running cannabis farms and everything, especially like here in Kansas City and everything, are using my videos to try and pirate my success or learn a little bit more about that. Um, I, I'm okay with that to a certain extent. Um, mainly my videos now are for people like individuals who, who don't want to go to the stores and spend exuberant amounts of money or worry about um, foreign entities contaminating their cannabis, which they have and they are. Um, it, it is happening. It's true. Um, I have concrete evidence in that. And as we go through, I will take take on and do those controversial videos as I see fit. I always try to walk on eggshells and be polite to society as much as I can, which usually isn't isn't the easiest thing for someone with TS like myself to do. But but I, I manage, I, I, I think I like, I like to think I do my best. Um, well, without further ado, seeing is believing. Come on, let's take a look. Woo. Looks like I'm not that good at stands. There we go, that's better. Still learning how to film, that'll always do. That is always going to be a consistent lesson that I will be learning. And that, and you know, growing cannabis, even though you, uh, you know, I have decades of experience and everything, it's always something that you're always going to be learning how to do better and more of. Otherwise, what's the point? You should just quit. You know, you really got to have a passion for this. So take a look, everyone. Her color is fully restored. Her nodes are stronger. She's going to produce. I mean... Look at this. Of course, this comes with the strand. This is not the redness I was describing. It's really a real kind of blood red, um, a blood for the blood god red uh, for those Warhammer fans out there um, is what it looks like when it's really HLVD. But this is wedding cake. This is normal. This is, but look at this. Look at the restorative part of it. Look at how it's just greening and just popping up. We're actually probably in our second week of flowering right now. So the change couldn't have come at a more perfect and positive time. Um, and I just couldn't be more pleased. And of course, look at our little canary in the coal mine down here. Look at how good our lettuce is. Isn't that great? I'll probably uh, have a little bit of salad later. <laughs> Oh man, that's what I love about beneficial plants and, and symbiotic botanicus, growing together, working together. You know, plants, fell, our fellow plants working together are always gonna help us out. And especially lettuce. Lettuce is like one of those low light things. You know, it doesn't, doesn't require that much. Like kale, you know, it doesn't need full sun and it'll really help, it's hardy. And it'll let me know if something's wrong, if something's sick and if something's healing and if things are moving, you know. It really was a combination of things that brought this plant back to health and did something and, and, and as well as was a combination of minds, you know, like I said earlier, that, that I'm glad that I have friends with actual PhDs and didn't go to a cannabis university or anything. They went to study plants because they see a bigger picture in life. You know, cannabis, although we love it and we love its intoxicating effects, at the end of the day, it's not going to feed us. It's not going to keep us healthy. So. If you're gonna study, study plants, study the whole thing, you know, myself included, you know, I grow more than pot, 
you know, actually that I, I got into the cannabis industry by raising trout and raising fish. For those of you who don't know that story, who haven't kind of taken a look back at my videos and seen how I did my cannabis farm linked with my father's trout farm. And um, well, that's, that's a story from a video I've already touched and probably a story for more future videos as I continue to make my um, teas and things off of frontier trout and all that. Um, but anyway, the one thing, the one little hint I'm gonna kind of give you guys, even though it is a combination of things, um, that, that caused this and helped save this is, and you've probably seen the, and, and I know I've touched, touched on this in past videos and everything, but I really, really want to reiterate and maybe browbeat just a little bit on my philosophy of when in doubt, flush it out. So a lot of times what HLVD really is and what the issues are with it is that it, um, it's having problems with the nutritional uptake. It's, it's, it's having problems with its own circulatory system. It's having problems eating, sustaining. You know, that's, 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 that's the first step in anything. So without further ado, Omri Listed, been in the game for decades and decades and decades as our friends at Fox Farm, the simple sledge bush doctors, you know, it's a flush, okay? It's not just for the last few weeks of your plant's life to clean out anything and to make your cannabis safer and more delicious. It's something that you should ideally look into using every other week during the actual life of your plant. It speeds up its nutritional uptake as well as it cleanses other things and keeps the soil. Now, I didn't do a full wash like I would um, when I am doing a real, real flush where I just, you know, I'm basically washing the soil. I'm cleaning the soil. I'm letting the water pour over and everything. Remember past videos where I've been using this quite a few times? Um, but I'll, I'll use this from time to time to help uptake, speed things up, get things going, keep things healthy, and to troubleshoot if I've had too much nitrogen or anything like that. It's always a fail safe and it's always a smart thing to have a bottle of this uh, among a few other things laying around, you know, and you are going to use this and you are going to want this. I just, I know there's other companies and flush stuff, but this and a few other things that I use and all that, helped put this into this. So this this is really kind of my little hint for you to get started in the right direction. However, there are some other things that had to happen and that required um, that I was uh, um, working towards doing that I wanted to make sure I included some PhDs uh, involved with so I knew the hard science of what I was doing and what was going to work and got some suggestions on what would help even more and better. So... And as we can see, my three years worth of hard work, my consistent baby here, my tripler Mac. I mean, look at this. See, see, this is this always happens two to three weeks with with when you start flowering if your plants are healthy and they're great. This is the beginning formation of buds. Oh, I can never control her. I mean, I start flowering here and she's just gonna, but that's the strawberry cough genetics I put in there. I, I like, I, I, you know, I'm, I can't really handle pure sativas. I really can't, especially the stuff in Thailand, all those sativa hazes and everything at my farms there. And um, the stuff that I cultivated and brought back from Thailand long ago, it's just like strawberry cough. I, I know people like to call it the stretch. I think it's a very lame thing. You know, but I, yeah, it's a stretch, but some more than others. Now, once again, even though I've explained this in the past, I want to make sure I touch base on it. It's not really the stretch. It's the reach. The reason why your plants are doing this additional growth and additional movement is one to finish consuming off any leftover nitrogen or anything that might be in the soil. Because remember now their nutritional needs have changed greatly. You know, they don't care too much for that nitrogen. That's why people who like use that miracle Grow potting soil and everything, their plants die when they start flowering because there's still too much nitrogen, too much time release, osmocotes, things like that. Not good. But what the real reason why cannabis is doing this is because she wants to be in a prime spot to get that sperm, to get that pollen from the male plants. It's breeding time for cannabis because this is the beginning of these plants' finality in their life. You know, the light, the light is now, t the timing and the light cycle and the intensity of the light as our planet rotates into, into fall and then winter 
is telling our photosensitive cannabis plants that it's, it's, it's time to prepare to end your life. And no better way to end your life than to think about the future generations. So that is the true real reason why your cannabis is still stretching out. And what now with that saying, what it's going to seek and what's going to also help mitigate all that extra growth and everything is airflow because it wants to be in the wind. It knows that if it's in that movement and in that wind, the sperm will, the sperm or the pollen, it's going to be in that wind. It's going to be in that, in that area. So you can bring your fans down and that'll help squat the plant. I didn't do it so much here with Tripler Mac, of course, but notice how I brought down fans here and moved them down on the wedding cake and how the wedding cake stained squat. Another reason also is because with the HLVD, the wedding cake got kind of a slower start, even though they came at the same time. And, and of course, finally, this wedding cake here is more indica dominant. Um, whereas my Tripler Mac, it is a 50-50. I, I wanted to get a complete split down of both worlds. So canisters who enjoy the more of the sativa and myself, the people who really need more of the indica afghanica. I put a lot of afghanica genetics in here, of course, because Kush is my main specialty. Um, get, get that. So that's what you're kind of noticing with, with, um, with another reason why Tripler Mac goes away. And that, Tripler Mac's bulletproof. I mean, I've designed this plant to withstand a lot of bullshit. And it's just gonna keep on kicking, keep on licking. And of course I exploit the main property of it and that is weed, you know, it's a weed. It's gonna eat, 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 eat. It's feasting like ducks and trouts, um, lots of animals that, that in the wild will feast and feast and eat and eat and eat and, and just chow down, you know? So always keep that in mind. Um, wedding cake really shouldn't be a more finicky strain, but people have damaged it apparently. So that's where it's at, you know? Um, I will go into later videos and we'll be doing different strains and different things. Um, honestly, I probably won't acquire any more um, stuff from my friends that are in, in uh, Jeopardy right now that are in California. Um, uh, although I love them and I'm solving their problems for them, they are compensating me for that. So that's why I'm helping them out and doing that. So know that you guys that, are, that, that, that I am helping or watching this video, don't worry, I'm gonna reach out to you in person. I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll tell you exactly what I did to cure these things. For those of you who do want to get the answers to that and all that thing, you're going to have to reach out to me and I'm going to send you an invoice and I'm going to need to be paid for my time. I'm sorry. It really is that way. Um, I need to be compensated for my hard work. I, but, but for all of you guys that are growing at home and enjoying this or doing that, answers are always free of charge. You know, of course, just ask in the comments, except on certain subjects I'll always be vague with because of those reasons. Um, I've got a mouth, I've got mouths to feed too. It's just, it's the way it is. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, let's just take one more look before I leave you guys in the end of this video and see how the, how the, how things are restoring. Um, of course I'm, you know, I've got some cleaning to do as we prepare for the first initial flowering and all that. I mean, first initial stages of flowering. I'm going to want light to come through. We'll, we'll do some initial clean. I'm going to do a video on cleaning. Notice how even, normally this doesn't happen, but usually the coloration of leaves that are already showing the damage, they don't repair themselves. With cannabis, it's not always the case. So you'll notice you'll still see just a little bit of that, you know, sandy, blotchy darkness to them. Um, that's fine. Um, these will usually be the first things that I use as kind of a paint by number system on things to remove as we start cleaning. Um, for, for our, our initial um, time of flowering. And of course, one more final clean out um, for the last few weeks of life, which we'll go over again. But yeah, so what we've got coming up on uh, next future videos, of course, as we watch, take these all the way to flower, make sure they're still going good. Make sure our cure is holding uh, true and staying well with our, with our plants, which I'm not in the slightest bit concerned or worried. Um, we'll be working with pineapple kush, of course, and then and then of course some black domina uh, that I've that I've brought that I've imported long ago. Very excited! It is a pure black domina strand. Um, future videos. I've got some friends who have sent me some other stuff. 
uh, we might do, we'll definitely do Girl Scout cookies as it's still really popular. Um, I've been around for the rise in the inception of Girl Scout cookies in Colorado. So we'll do that and some Gorilla cookies. Um, we'll do that. Uh, uh, after, after that, we're going to go this winter, we're going to start into the classics and we're going to go really, really heavily into the things that I was brought up with and I learned. We're going to go skunk number one. We're going to go Northern Lights. We're going to do White Widow. We're going to do traditional, original, from North America, Blueberry. Um, we're going to do all of those strains of legend. Um, and then, of course, maybe sometime next year, I'm going to advance the videos and start doing some harder stuff. I will more than likely, if not next year, the year after, do a Grow with Manathuska Thunderfuck. Um, it's not going to be for the lighthearted, though. It is a difficult strain to do, and it has very specific requirements. So I want to make sure that I get through a few years of video so you guys know where I'm coming from. And as I'm doing things, you'll know why I'm going to be acting and treating them differently. Not all cannabis is the same, especially because it is the most genetically modified crop on the planet. I mean... The only thing I can think of that might be a bit more genetically modified than cannabis would be corn or um, potatoes, possibly soy. But, you know, for, for you organic nuts and, and non-GMO people, well, you're in the wrong place. Unless you get on an airplane and you don't get killed by the locals for taking their treasures. Um, you know, finding those land race strands or the traditional strands, which I have a lot of, and I've acquired through my travels through the world as being a chef. Um, but yeah, with that saying, you know, we'll just kind of let things go, and and we'll, we'll I'll kind of fall through the lineup, and we'll start doing things strain specific as we go through different ideas and tactics and movements. If there's a strain that you'd like to see me do specifically or something. Uh, post it in the comments below. Most of the time, though, I'm going to look and see it, the validity of that strain and see if it's just BS from a grower who says that they're a breeder and that they did it in only a few months. It doesn't work that way. It took me three years to develop this. So anyone that tells you that they came up with something within a year or whatever is a liar. This takes time. Breeding takes time. But let's, let's focus on the classics and let's focus on the things that I have from Hollyland and that I have from my travels. Um, because those are going to be more stable and we'll do that. Remember, it's not new strains and everything that make them more potent or more flavorful or things like that. In today's technology with our, with our, with these phenomenal GrowPro solution lights being a, being an example to outstanding companies that make great fertilizers to how I build my soil to my experience, I could take a Blue Dream, which is supposed to be 19%, and I've gotten it to test upwards of 28 to 32 percent total THCs. I've done that. It's doable. So you really need to stop looking at all the frou-frou craziness that people are shoving down your throat and messing with them because that's the kind of stuff that causes HLVD. It is. It's part of it. It really is that and uncleanliness and everything that I've touched in a prior video. And, and I'll always kind of harp on this subject because that's what destructive behavior causes. It causes a complete and utter genetic decline of, of a plant that we would like to keep around. Okay? So forget about the new O. Just focus on the old stuff. Okay? Learn to crawl, then walk, then fly. Okay, Frederick Nietzsche? You know, one cannot just fly into fly. So... Anyway, it's been great seeing you all here, and I really look forward to doing another video with you guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. As usual, put those questions, suggestions, anything in the comments. I really do love hearing from them, even when they are negative. It really doesn't bother me that much. It just, it's good to know that someone's paying attention and watching. I'll see you all real soon, okay? Bye.